What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts to the States of Brazil, explained by Geography Now, of course. And what's this? Daily uploads by Denaric Wolf. Whoa, it must be my birthday. Well, happy birthday in case it actually is your birthday. But, well, statistically speaking, my channel has over 4,000 subs, so it should be the birthday of a few people out there because, you know, 365 days in a year. It should be a birthday of a few people at least. So <laughs> this this will be their birthday present. Daily uploads by Generic Wolf. Now, uh, this will probably be the last video of the year. So we're going to end the year off with something very positive. And uh, one of the most positive people I know out there in the world, one of the most positive nationalities that I know are probably the Brazilian people. Because in my comment section in the original uh, Brazil video that I had done, not the States, but the original video, there were, there were like the most positive comments you can possibly hope for. <laughs> Uh, nothing negative about they were always positive always had something nice to say so kudos to the brazilians out there so this one goes out to you guys which are like my eighth most subscribed yeah i think seventh or eighth most subscribed uh, demographics on my channel yeah good well they are like the seventh or eighth most populated country in the world so that, that's probably why as well <laughs> but you know what let's just get right into the video i'm not gonna keep talking for like three minutes like i usually do <laughs> Hey everybody, so you know this week is going to have to be a filler week. This is a video that I promised to do a long time ago, but I never had time until now. Explaining the states of Brazil. I checked my demographics and Brazil is <laughs> one of the top 15 countries subscribed to my channel. Now, full disclosure, I am not Brazilian. They are I have never even one of the most populated I would countries. Love to go. So me what too. I've done is I have talked to a lot but of you COVID, guys, the so. Brazilian geography peeps to help me with this video. And I know a few Brazilian people here in LA. Yeah, Lucas, help, help me out with the video. <laughs> thought about each of the states of Brazil. So if I get anything wrong, it's your fault. So uh, yeah, let's just jump into it. Acre. There's a joke. A Acre. <laughs> okay. Before <coughs> we officially get into the Brazilian states, I do know one thing about them. I do know they like n name it like the northern region, then just like southern region, then there's south, western, southeastern, something like that. They just, uh, yeah, name it, name the regions by the, by the uh, cardinal points on the map. But I know this is like Rio do, do Sul, do Grande. This is like uh, Rio de Janeiro is like one of the, yeah. I think this one's Rio de Janeiro. This one's San Paulo. I know the Amazonas is like one of the largest ones. That's Acre. I know some of the states, so I'm not completely, uh, not like with the Indian states where I barely knew any of them. I know some of these. This is Bahia, I think. And then these are the questionable states that I don't know anything about really. But, uh, yeah, I believe uh, Brazil actually started off more like over here in this location on the <coughs> eastern coast. Of course, that, that's where the settlers would have to arrive. But it was at the day uh, during uh, the treaty of – I already forgot the name of the treaty already. But basically, one of the popes uh, got the Spanish Spaniards and the Portuguese together and he drew the line. He drew a line down like one of the meridians, the longitudes – is it longitude or latitude? I think longitudes of the earth. And he said everything west is Span Spanish territory. Everything east is Portuguese territory, meaning, you know, like the Portuguese had a lot of territories in Africa at the day. They had Goa at the time. But they also, also one of the uh, one of those lines passed like right through here. And this part remained Portuguese. And that's where the Portuguese started to spread their influence throughout uh, Brazil at the time. Imagine if the longitude was just a little bit to the, to the east. What would that mean? Like the... Spanish would get all of South America. They would all speak Spanish. But no, one of the longitudes passed right through here and remained Portuguese to the day. And, of course, the Brazilian Empire spread its influence, you know, annexing more territory, especially Acre, which we're going to get into. And uh, they, they even lost some territories, just such as Uruguay, which was actually one time a part of, uh, of Brazil. But uh, I guess the Argentinians and Brazilians don't mind because it acts like a buffer zone between them. So they want to keep the two great powers of South America away from each other as much as possible. That's why you have countries such as Paraguay and Uruguay. They're like on large open fields, which uh, which means like uh, maintaining your sovereignty on a large open field like that wedged in between two great powers that are much more powerful than you is maintain your independence just – uh, very difficult to say. And uh, yeah, at one point, Paraguay actually had like 90% of their their male population like wiped out in just warfare. So uh, that was a crazy dictator guy in Paraguay that threw all their men into into their own deaths. 
But uh, yeah, they want to keep themselves away from each other and they act as basically buffer zone states. Don't tell that to the Paraguayans or the Uruguayans, but I think that's what <laughs> they're meant to be. And it works just fine. And their peace has been, yeah, South America has been relatively peaceful ever since then. Acre doesn't exist, and there's probably dinosaurs in it. Very few people in Brazil have actually been to Acre, let alone met somebody from Acre. I actually did meet two people from Acre here in Los Angeles. They were two gay guys that were gay for each other, but the point was, more importantly, <laughs> they were from Acre. The okay. Is we do exist, and like half the population lives I mean, I'm not judging. Rio Branco or Rio Branco. They are famous for, what do I have here? Ancient geoglyphs having a historic dispute with Bolivia. Aliens. The two guys I met said the two things I have to mention are Takaka and and the strange Santo Daime religious community known for ingesting the hallucinogenic ayahuasca. Drink. Oh, wow. I've seen I've seen that before. Uh, you can see uh, if you type in Vsauce ayahuasca, you actually tried that drink before. It causes you to go all hallucinogenic. There's like a guy singing, like a shaman singing weird chants to you while you like do days off into this magical land. And uh, so that's where he went. Uh, I think it was more in Peru. So yeah. It was, Peru, Bolivia, that that place in general is where you find those peoples that know how all this works. I believe it's a root. You like put a root in a pot of boiling water and it, be it becomes like a very like hallucinogenic substance. So, yeah. To a great start, aren't we? Alagoas. They are the second smallest state and apparently sometimes they are called the water paradise because they are surrounded by the largest barrier reef in Brazil. It has incredibly shallow waters that you can walk like a kilometer off into the ocean and you're still only going to be like knee deep. Uh, they're also popular for Fandango music, the Warrior Festival, uh, which is a public folk display that depicts naval battles. Amapa. In colonial years, this place was called Portuguese Guiana. It's kind of like the most well-preserved forest state in Brazil. The vast majority of the population only lives in two cities, Macapa and Santana, and the rest of the state is just covered like 90% in forest, 70% of which is unexplored. Let's see what I have here. Uh, because it's close Any to Brazilians the out there? Time to explore. <laughs> hey, I would, <laughs> if I was Amazonas, Brazilian. The largest state of Brazil. They hold the largest territory mm -hmm. of the world. This one I do know. Rainforest and the most biodiverse region on the planet. Also, obviously, it has the largest number of indigenous tribes, many of which are still uncontacted with the outside world. It's also here you can find the tallest mountain, Pico de Nablina. Manaus is the capital. They have a cool mm. offer festival. I heard of Manaus. It's kind of awesome. The Manaus is situated right on the like uh, Amazon River. And it's like, you can just see all the Amazon is empty and then there's just like one large uh, city. I used to, I called it back then uh, Manana, but that was wrong. It's Manaus. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's like a Belgrade sized city just in the Amazon. I, I wonder what it's like, like living in there and exploring the Amazon with your friends while you're growing up. Oh, that'd be awesome. But no, I grew up in Bosnia and it was, uh, <laughs> it was mine, mine infested. So you can not really like go out and explore the forests of Bosnia. <laughs> I was told this is kind of like the place where people go to for like secret undocumented trips into the rainforest that they can pay the locals under the table for. Nobody can hear you scream. Bahia. From what I was told, despite the reports of crime, everyone still loves this state. And it plays like such a huge significant role of importance in terms of culture and history. It has the longest coast of any state, so the beaches here are like spot on, beautiful, perfect. It also has like the most distinctive African imprint on their culture as it was a major hub for the slave trade. Today they have have the largest black population in Brazil. World renowned cultural traits like capoeira and samba were born here. I don't even really have to explain what those are. And they have those really cool I know what those fried are. aracaje things. Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> that was bad <laughs> pronunciation, I think. Cool fortress on the sea off the coast. And I was told that Bahia's Carnival is like the cool Carnival that the Brazilians go to when they're sick and tired of all the tourists down in Rio. Seara. This is yeah. like. <laughs> but, uh, the reason that has a, such a large African-American population, or technically, yeah, there would be African-Americans. It's South America, but it's still America. So African South Americans, I guess, is because uh, that was the the closest point to Africa, like it, really out of out of anywhere in the, in the Americas. The Brazil is like the closest to Africa, so they shipped them right over there into the Bahia State, where they were yeah. unfortunately used for slavery reasons. But uh, you know. Uh, at least the uh, slavery doesn't exist uh, anymore, thankfully. It was only like 10 years ago, I believe, Mauritania, or was it like even fewer than that, th that they finally uh, outlawed slavery in their own country. And officially, slavery is outlawed everywhere in the world. 
unfortunately still practiced in some places. They're around 20 million. I'm just trying to get, you know, the information out for to raise awareness. There's still around 20 to 30 million slaves being held in the world. I know this took a little bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to let people know. The family vacation spot of Brazil. The capital Fortaleza is the fourth largest city in Brazil. They are the kite surfing capital. They have that Jeez, how do you pronounce this? Jericoacoara. Jericoacoara. They have that Jericoacoara beach thing with all the cool, like, rock arches. And the coconuts are so cheap, you can literally have a guy cut one open for you to drink for, like, 20 cents. Ooh. Yeah, coconut water is, like, my favorite non-alcoholic drink. So this place racks up huge points for me. Espirito Santo. Weird fact is... Nobody gonna talk about those people with hammocks inside the waters? No? <laughs> What's that all about? Is that, like... That would feel kind of weird when I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Its name translates to Holy Spirit, but the people here call themselves Kapishaba, which means corn hair. Kind of like how Wisconsin people are called cheese heads. Anyway, the capital is Victoria. Oh, and uh, another thing that they're famous for is uh, Guarapari's Healing Black Sand Beaches, and they also make great seafood stews. Goyas. This is a central Brazilian state, so here you get the farm and the countryside mm -hmm. and the ranches. Very hot and humid. The Serrada. So have told me that Goyas is kind of seen as like the capital's bodyguard. Like they work together and they share all the government secrets. The capital's like farm? Maryland and Virginia are to Washington, D.C. Uh, let's see. Goiania is the capital known for having the largest green area per inhabitant in the world after Edmonton, Canada. But yeah, it's like an agriculture low-key access to the government files state. <coughs> this is like the state I personally would really love to visit. The one thing this state is known for is... Oh yeah, these are so cool. National Park. It is one of the strangest landscapes on the planet. Sand dunes with water. Other I'm surprised like nobody like filmed or maybe there is a film or a movie out there that takes place in this kind of area. Imagine like a James Bond film where there was like there were like in this area. Oh, that would be awesome because that's one of the coolest looking things I've ever seen. The It's just a desert with water in it. It was like, it's like a huge oxymoron, this uh, place with the uh, desert capital, lakes. And uh, it is the city that most closely resembles a Portuguese city in Brazil. But uh, yeah, wow, Maranhão. Mato Grosso. It is the farm and beef capital of Brazil. Very sparsely populated. The capital, Cuiaba, only has about half a million people. The largest sandstone cavern can be found here, Aroijari. In the south, it's also home to the Patanal, the world's largest wetland. And apparently you guys told me they are also famous for Brazilian country music known as Sertanejo. Which brings us to Mato Grosso do Sul. Geography Flora told me that they're kind of sick and tired of being mixed up with Mato Grosso, so whenever someone refers to the state, they make sure that they say do Sul after. <laughs> the capital is Campo Grande, however Bonito is like the more popular tourist destination because they have like crystal clear pools and lakes and rivers. Uh, I was told that their culture is very heavily influenced by Paraguay and like Paraguay, the Guarani language is the second most commonly spoken language in the state. And the people here love crossing the border and buying stuff in Paraguay because everything there is way cheaper. Uh, they also love drinking terere, which is like a cold bird. I seen that thing a lot. What what what's that all about? Like I seen some Argentinian people like drinking. I keep thinking it's like marijuana and water or something. But what is it actually, Paul? Of oh my gosh, the Portuguese language. Like Portuguese is like the Danish. I hope that's like, like a hallucinogenic you drink. The the word, but then you just kind of give up on the rest of it. Shima. Anyway, moving on. Minas Gerais. Geography Minas Morgul. Minas Gerais is like the grandma's house of Brazil. It's probably like the only state that all the other states love. And the reason being because it's kind of like one of, if not the most foodie state of all the states. Every I single like foodie states. Told me that Minas Gerais, I have to mention the cheese bread. Pão de queijo. Did I get that? No, I did not pronounce it. And tropeiro beans and feijoada stew. Oh my, <laughs> like uh, some people are giving me tips how to read Portuguese correctly. Like uh, I thought the a D and E would make like a J sound, but that's like only sometimes a Brazilian thing, not really a Portuguese thing. But I still find Portuguese like so bizarre when it comes to reading. I thought French was the most bizarre of the Romance languages when it comes to reading, but I don't know, Portuguese, it's up there. Also, no surprise, as the name alludes to, Minas. This place has some of the most, like, historically significant mines in the country. The Portuguese got a ton of gold from here, which was subsequently stolen by the British, apparently, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, moving on. Always ah, the British. The queen of the jungle. The 
second largest state in the country, the capital, Belém. According to geography Ariel, it's like the special strategic gateway to the Amazon that the Portuguese protected. They are a huge producer of rubber, iron, and acai berries. The northerners eat the acai salty, while the southerners eat it with ice cream. They are also famous for brega music, and lots of dams were built here to power the entire country. Also, it is Damn. here where they grow the most <laughs> Brazil nuts, which, by the way, in Brazil, they call Brazil nuts para nuts because para. Paraíba. Quite a few of you guys have told me that this is like the calm state of Brazil. It's like the perfect place to retire. Apparently the capital João Pessoa is located on the easternmost point of the American continent, known as Ponta do Seixas. Also, it was a former Dutch settlement and for 20 years it was known as Frederickstad? Paraná. So many of you guys have told me Paraná is known as Brazilian Russia. It's the coldest spot in Brazil and oh, okay. uh, apparently a lot of weird things happen here. The capital Curitiba is so high up it snows every so often which is rare for Brazil. Uh, geography <laughs> Not rare here. Me that they are like the quiet ones that take time to warm up to if they don't know you. They call sausages Vina Usually cold climates make those where there people. Are no Starbucks because they want to protect their own coffee industry. Okay. Paraná. Okay, so he didn't mention the Paraná River, which I thought would be like one of the one of the key features that of the Paraná state. I guess. Well, it's obviously named after the country. It flows right in between Brazil into Argentina. Acts as a another buffer zone between Argentina and Brazil. Uh, the large Paraná River. Unfortunately, the <coughs> the part of the Paraná River that the Brazilians have is non navigable. And uh, basically, the entire part of it that's navigable it belongs to the Argentinians, which helps the Argentinians really industrialize, especially in the early 20th century. Argentina really messed up. I, I, I don't know any other state that messed up as much as Argentina did when it comes to their economy. But um, the Paraná River is one of the reasons why Argentina was one of the wealthiest states in, well, it still is one of the wealthiest states in uh, South America, but that that actually goes to uh, Chile nowadays. Chile is actually the wealthiest South American state uh, per capita, not by overall economy. Overall economy, obviously, Brazil. According to geography, Olavo, people from Pernambuco are very artsy, and one of the most recent and successful artistic movements came from here, the Mangue Beat. Also, great musicians like Zé Ramalho came from here. Uh, and impressions. don't forget the dish Bolo de Rolo. It's very delicious. Cool. And uh, they're also known for having beaches with sharks. They are known also for a special dance called the Frevo. And the first synagogue in the Americas was built in the capital, he Recife. I don't get it. There's an R, but why did it work? Recife? Piauí. It's kind of funny. It's like they just barely grabbed a stretch of coast on the north, but their capital territory. Just like Bosnia. Is yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was told that this is kind of like the poorest state of Brazil. But they know how to adapt. One has really to be well. the poorest, unfortunately. Kind of like the underdog state, which is why every so often people like this, Winderson Nunes, the most famous Brazilian YouTuber, came out of it. Otherwise, they are known for the uh, Serra da Capivara Park, which has extremely old rock paintings. Piauí. Piauí. Rio de Janeiro. I feel like I don't even really have to say that much. You all know this place. All the yep. iconic images and landmarks of Brazilian culture and media come from this place. You know, the Christ the Redeemer statue, Copacabana Beach, Sugarloaf Mountain, the works. It's kind of like the Los Angeles of Brazil. You know, like kind of like the shiny spokesperson and ambassador that all the tourists flock to. I mean, for the longest time, they were the capital of Brazil. However, keep in mind, you're thinking of the city of Rio de Janeiro. Remember, there's a whole state that comes with it. Not a really big one. But like New York. York. You know, cities like and in New York State. Iguazu, Petropolis. And this place, Campos dos Goita... Campos dos Goita Cases. And each of these cities has like their own cool little quirk, but however, yeah, Rio, the city is more of like the flashy hotspot. Rio Grande do Norte, the Christmas state. The capital is even called Natal, the word for Christmas. Christmas. And every Christmas they go all out and have a huge party and it's like a big deal for them. Uh, according to NASA, this place has the purest air in all of the Americas. Good for you. Uh, it's also I need some of that air. Cashew tree, estimated to be somewhere around 8,400 square meters. They also host Carnatal. That was <laughs> it's like one tree. Off-season carnival celebrations. Woohoo! 
Rio Grande do Sul, the southernmost state. Capital, Porto Alegre. Now, I've met quite a few people from this specific state from Brazil. People here are known as gauchos, similar to Argentina and Uruguay. This is like the whitest state of Brazil. They have a huge Good way to German put it. <laughs> White. population. They have their own accent, cuisine. They're very famous for their barbecue. There's a lot of history here. At one point, they tried to secede in the rag, rag muffin war, right? I think that's what it was called. Or rag muffin. the revolution. Then they had a war with like all their neighbors, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay. Paraguay for some reason. It's, it's, it's crazy. These people did a lot of fighting. But yeah, they're very distinct from the rest of mm. Brazil. A lot of the people here Brutal fighting speak even. speak their mother tongues like German, Italian, and Polish. They have Oktoberfest, the southern part of Brazil. It's... So I'm assuming a lot of Europeans specifically went to that state or to the southernmost states, probably because the... The climate there was more akin to uh, Europe, I'm assuming. So they thought, you know, this place is more for us because, you know, coming over there, you would usually come as a, a farmer to start your life, I assume. So you would farm at the climate that you're more used to. So that's probably why they didn't go more to the north of Brazil, the southern port. Uh, that's just my theory, at least. I did see an ethnic map of uh, Brazil at one point, And yeah, a lot of like even Slavic peoples live around that place, the southern place of of uh, Brazil, and uh, a couple isn't that where the the World Cup was held? I believe so. Yeah, Rio do Grande, Rio do Grande Sul. Oh my God, <laughs> so hard to pronounce. Rio do Grande Sul. It's, it's very different from the rest. Congonia. The capital is Porto Velho. Uh, I was told this is like the wild west of Brazil. It's like the frontier between the humid Amazon and the dry Cerrado. A huge portion of the state is native territory belonging to 21 indigenous people groups, one of which only has about five members left. Unfortunately, it's also kind of known as the state with the worst deforestation rates. A lot of the land is cleared for agriculture. But uh, yeah, it's like a, it's like Acre's twin, you know, a shrouded in mystery. Nobody knows anything about it. What's going on? What are you what are you hiding, Hondonia? Rora now, unfortunately, the Amazon rainforest is constantly decreasing all the time. A lot, a lot of times due to fires by, by farmers trying to, you know, make more land, make more room for more land, which they grow. They grow specifically like soybeans a lot in the Amazon. It's a good, you know, place to grow soybeans. And there's a huge demand in the world for, for soybeans. A lot of uh, animals, you know, like to use it as their source of uh, food and they keep on... Uh, clearing out the uh, <clears throat> Amazon, which is unfortunate because I heard that once it's completely cleared out, like the Amazon would not be would not be able to really ever recover after that because uh, as soon as all the the trees are gone, like uh, there's no transpiration going on. I think that's the term transpiration as when uh, water falls, you know, rainfall falls on a tree and uh, the tree then, uh, you know, the water evaporates from the tree called like transpiration. I think that's the term. Uh, that's mostly where the Amazon's, you know, uh, rain comes from. Otherwise, it's on the same like longitude, I believe, as like like the Sahara Desert, which you know feeds the Amazon, and the, the dust literally blows all the way from the the Sahara Desert into the Amazon rainforest, and it helps you know maintain its uh, nutrients. But uh, once once all the trees are cut down, the it would not be that rainy as much anymore, and you wouldn't be able to really sustain that much tree life anymore so that's kind of scary to think about once it's gone it's gone the right lung of the earth is gone basically the left lung i call the congo rainforest so that's like the right and left lung so we'd lose a lung we'd have to breathe on one. Ooh, i can imagine i'm already feeling the uh lack of oxygen <coughs> okay <laughs> sorry but uh in reality uh most of our oxygen is produced in the oceans not in uh rainforests rainforests are the largest carbon sinks so they take the carbon out of uh out of our earth. Either way, the Amazon still very important. Aima, the northernmost state, and the capital Boa Vista is the only capital that is north of the equator. Uh, this place is famous for the tri-point border between Guyana and Venezuela at Mount Roraima. Basically, it's that really cool flat top mountain that was the inspiration for the movie Up. Up. And apparently, yep. a lot of people are now paying attention to this state because a lot of Venezuelans are crossing the border because, you know, they're trying to escape the economic hardships uh, implemented by the harsh Maduro hmm. regime. But yeah, uh, basically, uh, that's still going on with a wave unfortunately illegal venezuelan immigrants coming in 
It's true though, it's kind of true. Santa Catarina. The capital, Florianopolis, is actually on an island off the coast. Uh, according to geography, it wanted to be different. <laughs> like a place that fuses urban and nature together. The people here are famous for being my favorite fishers. Apparently, in the town of Laguna, the fishermen have made a strange alliance with the dolphins, in which the dolphins help them catch fish. We shall destroy the dolphins the leftovers <laughs> as payment. So yeah, basically, uh, if you want to meet alliance with dolphins, dolphins Santa Catarina, São Paulo. This is basically the New York of Brazil. São Paulo. Paulo is nicknamed the locomotive of Brazil, and it mm -hmm. is like the working machine that keeps Brazil afloat. It is the most populous state with over 45 million people. It has the largest economy and is by far the richest <coughs> state. It Wouldn't that like mean it's one of the large? Yeah, it is the largest then city in the world if you count 45 million. Well, they don't live in one city. Never mind. <laughs> because like Tokyo has like 40 million, and uh, I guess uh, Sao Paulo is like, I don't know, second or third? It's, it's up there, basically. It's one of the largest places on Earth. But uh, Sao Paulo specifically is this large because it has one of the features that a lot of other cities in uh, Brazil don't have. And that is, if you notice Brazil, if you look at the coastline of Brazil, open up like Google Earth right now and check a, take a look at the eastern coastline of Brazil. Notice how there's like giant mountains right up against like uh, shores, which make Brazil look beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But not the best place to have like ports because you can't you can't just put a port there and just somehow get get your goods all the way up like a mountain and then you know so it's not really a viable place to set up ports except for uh, São Paulo if you notice there's like a a crack in between those uh, mountains where São Paulo is located and that's that way you can actually get goods in and out very easily so it really is like the trade hub of Brazil basically. It has the largest, like, uh, GDP per capita. If you take, take a look at uh, purchasing power parity of Sao Paulo, it's basically first world. It has, like, $50,000 uh, purchasing power parity. Uh, so that is basically first world. Uh, now, unfortunately, that causes a very a lot of, like, uh, how should I say, uh, the Gini index of uh, Brazil is very high because there's a huge difference between living in like the Amazonas or whatever, like in the the more the the parts the parts of Brazil more inside more inland, which don't have really navigable rivers or any ports of any sort, so uh, it causes a huge disparity of wealth in, in Brazil because of that reason, and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about São Paulo. San Paulo? Okay. Alone is richer than all of Saint Paul. Uruguay, Paraguay, and Bolivia put together. San Paulo is the largest. See what I mean? City. Obviously, it's the ninth largest in the world and the second largest ninth. in the Americas right. after Mexico City. It's incredibly diverse. Italians, Greeks, Arabs. It has the largest Japanese Bosnians, probably. Japan. But what is San Paulo really like? Well, according to you guys, the Brazilian geography peeps, I've gotten everything from San Paulo has great nightclubs. The people are thick-headed and snobbish. <laughs> they are sophisticated. They are smart, but like in a crazy way. They are cool people. Like Sarah Evans. Around them. I don't even know what that means. Basically, São Paulo is the powerhouse of Brazil. Sergipe, the smallest state in Brazil. There's a stupid joke. Which Brazilian state wants to be a Jeep? Sergipe. Because, you know, in Portuguese, Ser means be and Jeep is how you pronounce Jeep. Yeah. Anyway, this place actually has some pretty no. cool quirky <laughs> things. According to geography, Rusty. Yeah, Rusty. I was surprised Rusty. It doesn't sound like a Brazilian name, but cool. They have the statues from traditional folklore on the river with a huge crab statue as well because they love eating crabs. They have that strange Lambe Sujos and Caboclinos festival where people paint themselves black. It's often said that Sergipe is like Bahia's backyard. <laughs> are they sure the African Americans are okay with that? Them painting themselves like that? <laughs> I don't know. Which means the toucan speak in the native Tupi language. This is the newest state that broke off from Goyas in 1988, I think? Yeah. Uh, the state is famous for the Jalapamu <coughs> National Park. It was portrayed in a recent telenovela from Global TV called Outro Lado do Paraiso, the other side of paradise. Otherwise, they are also really tied in with their indigenous population. They even hosted the Indigenous World Games in 2015 in the capital Palmas. But yeah. Toucan's beak. Woohoo! And finally, we reach the capital, Brasilia. Now, literally every Brazilian I talk to when I ask them to explain what they think about the capital, they all do the same thing. They all just kind of go like, 
<laughs> Freaking now, capital, man. Countries across the world, the capital can sometimes be seen as a source of problems. No shocker, that kind of applies to Brazil as well. Basically, the city was built in the 50s and inaugurated in the 60s as the new capital of Brazil as a means to kind of centralize the government buildings. It was built in the shape of an airplane or bird. It's kind of up for dispute. It looks pretty cool. I gotta be honest. Moving in and it's, it's a new city. It was built specifically to become the new capital. It has the second largest soccer, football, stadium in the country. It's football. And uh, yeah, this is just kind of like where the <laughs> stuff gets done and the people complain. So yeah, that is just about it. Uh, I tried my best. Okay, well, last thing I will mention, I guess, is uh, Brasilia about Brazil. Now, it was not only put there to centralize, uh, you know, the location so they can administer the place a lot e easier. I think the, correct me if I'm wrong, the former capital was Rio de Janeiro, then they moved it to Brasilia. I think so. one of the two, Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro, were the capitals, and then uh, there was moved to Brasilia. Not only that, but they hoped that this would help kind of, you know, increase the wealth of the more impoverished central areas of Brazil and it, you know kind of did and created more demand for more food in the central areas and so people so farmers at the place had more work to do I guess and so they can you know uh, make food for Brasilia and uh, overall it's a it was a pretty good idea besides there is one a controversial thing that uh why they moved it out of Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo, one of the reasons, is uh, there's a lot of people there and a lot of people <clears throat> like to complain a lot. So you could go out and you can complain a lot, start protests and everything uh, because that's where <clears throat> a lot of the people would live anyway. But if you move the capital away, if you move all the politicians away from the people, then uh, they, they would find it a lot more difficult to protest. Then you have to go all the way to Brasilia just to start a protest, which would make protesting very much difficult. This is what a lot of countries do. They like to move their capitals to other places. Now, is it a good idea or not? I don't know. Time will tell, I guess. I tried to relay what you guys told me, and I hope I did Brazil justice. Uh, I hope no I did I justice. I'm never going to recover from that Ronaldo mistake. Never. Yeah. You won't. Uh, hope <laughs> and hope you have a good one. See you. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, Geography Now. I think that will be the last one of this year. Uh, tomorrow is the 31st. I'll probably be uh, uh, expecting New Year's. I won't be th doing any fireworks or anything. I'm just going to be happy that this year is gone and that we can get back to our normal lives. <laughs> Hopefully. I will be doing a lot more videos. Don't worry about it. I'm still working on the script of my own new video. <laughs> you guys will see when it comes out. I'll still be doing reactions here and there and... Uh, Hopefully a new year will be a new me and a new channel of Denaric Wolf. So uh, one last thing. Thank you to David Sternad for being my patron for a while now. Thanks a whole lot to him. And uh, hopefully I'll have more things out for my <clears throat> patron patrons in the future. But that's a different story for a different time. Until then, I will see you guys uh, next time and take care.